Imagine if one day, you were suddenly sucked into your favorite video game, and you find yourself transformed into the weakest monster. A monster so weak, that you can't even beat a level 1 slime. We meet a boy named Don, as he plays a popular VR game known as Azure Sky. His group hunts slimes for the game's 10th anniversary quest. Even though they are easy to kill, they are required to hunt 50,000 of them, and he soon realizes that the quest will take forever. He notices that the slimes are attracted to flowers, so he comes up with a plan. They use the flowers to gather all the slimes into one place, and using magic, they manage to kill thousands of slimes in a single go. At the end of the day, they manage to complete the quest, and they are all given a chest of rewards. His companions are happy with their loot, and decide to log off for the day. When Don checks his chest, he gets an Azure Sky Trial card. He can't believe that that is his only reward, and he thinks he is getting scammed. He reads the card, and he learns that it will make him become a member of the Azure Sky. He decides to try it out, thinking that there must be something special about it, but he suddenly gets sucked in by a black hole. He falls from the sky, landing in the middle of a field that is close to the starting village, and he realizes that he's been transformed into a skeleton warrior, which is the weakest and most useless monster in the game. He wonders what's going on, thinking that there must be something special, because it's the 10th anniversary quest reward, so he eagerly checks his stats, only to find he is incredibly weak. But he remembers how someone became a hero, even after being reincarnated as a slime. So Don becomes motivated, attacking a nearby slime, and seeing it as his first step to becoming stronger, he manages to land a kick on the slime, but it seems to have no effect. The slime becomes pissed, sending him flying, and crushing him to death with its body. He respawns, and tries his luck against the other monsters in the area, but he keeps on losing. Don despairs, realizing that he can't defeat anyone. He suddenly hears a pair of rookie adventurers passing by, and he comes up with another idea. He blocks their path, showing off his killer dance moves to provoke them. The boy thinks he could be a hidden boss, as Don challenges them to take him on. The boy charges at him, but Don runs away, attacking a group of goblins, knowing that it will make them aggressive, and attack the closest player, which happens to be the boy. The goblins start attacking the boy, but Don knows he should be strong enough to defeat them, so he stands nearby as he waits for the boy to kill them, knowing that he will also earn some experience. We learn that Don has been playing Azure Sky for 10 years, so he knows his way around the game, and his knowledge allows him to level up, despite being the weakest monster. After he reaches level 5, he goes back to the slime, getting his revenge on the monster, and showing it who's boss. The newbies start talking about the skeleton warrior that has been causing trouble around the starter town, and they call for an experienced adventurer to help get rid of it. The next day, we see that Don has gained two skeleton warriors as followers, Bonnie and Fatty. They treat him as their boss, and Don thinks about becoming the strongest being in the game, when suddenly, they are attacked by a level 25 knight named Jake, killing his followers, and dealing massive damage to him. He thinks about how to outwit the knight, but the knight attacks him with his sword, killing him instantly. Don respawns near his followers, realizing that he has lost half of his experience points, and he thinks about getting revenge on Jake. He goes on a quest to reach level 20, thinking that he can get a job promotion at that level, and have a human body that he can use to defeat Jake. He kills the monsters in the area, until he is finally able to reach level 20. Don casually walks to the city for his job promotion, but the adventurers wonder what a monster is doing in the city. But the guard stops him from entering the city, calling him an unowned monster, before taking him out with a single blow. We meet a girl named Bubbles, who has just joined the game. A tutorial sprite appears, telling her that Azure Sky is an immersive game, which synchronizes with her senses. She is taken to the newbie training camp, where she looks around, enjoying the scenery, when she sees another newbie eagerly rushing to the forest. But the newbie ends up being ambushed by a number of higher level skeletons, which beat him up. Meanwhile, Don is depressed because he can't enter the city to get his job promotion. Fatty asks him if they can help, and Don comes up with an idea. He gathers all the skeleton warriors, telling them that they are going to raid the wolf plains. Don gives them all books, which turn out to be guides for killing wolves. However, Fatty tells him that skeletons can't read. Don looks around, seeing that everyone is still at a low level, and thinks they will be hunted down by players. So he teaches them how to defeat players, 
explaining that a player needs to be lured into a trap where they can beat them up and take their stuff. The skeletons like his plan, but we see a cat ninja spying on Don, wondering what he's doing. At the wolf plane, we see three newbies discussing how they should defeat the wolves, when suddenly, they see skeleton warriors killing wolves by continuously stabbing it from behind, which confuses the adventurers, because monsters shouldn't be farming other monsters. The skeletons return home with the wolves' remains, and they give Don the materials he needs, saying that they even robbed some players along the way. Don is happy, because the skeletons seem to get smarter as they level up. He takes the materials he needs, putting Fatty in charge, as he leaves to explore the world. As he heads off, he thinks about becoming the pet of a beast tamer so that he can enter the city. Don observes the rookie beast tamers in the area, wondering which of them would make a good master for him. He sees Bubbles, as she looks for a powerful pet to capture. She sees a pink slime, finding it cute, but she tries to capture it while it's at full HP, so she fails to catch it. But she is determined not to give up, and Don takes a liking to her, wanting her to be his master. As she tries to capture another pink slime, Don kicks it out of the way and lets himself get captured. Bubbles is devastated, and the tutorial sprite congratulates her on her first pet, but she starts crying because she wanted a cute slime. Don claims he's also cute, but she looks at him and calls him ugly. She reveals that she was traumatized by skeleton warriors when she started out, so she doesn't want one as a pet. Don tries to charm her, telling her that he was once a handsome prince, and she ends up keeping him as her pet, and he finally gets into the city. As they walk around, Bubbles reveals she knows nothing about the game, but Don tells her that she can ask him questions, saying she can even treat him like he's another player. But Bubbles laughs at him, saying she can't treat him as a player, because he's just a skeleton. However, Don claims that things will change once he gets his job promotion. Bubbles says that they will need a lot of money to make that happen, admitting she doesn't have enough but she tells him she will find a way, because she wants to be a good master to him. Don realizes that she has a good heart, so he gives her some money, claiming that he already has enough for the job promotion. They spend the rest of the day together, as the cat ninja continues to spy on them. That evening, the cat ninja reports to his master, informing him about the unusual monster that he's been observing. The master knows the 10th anniversary quest has something to do with an intelligent NPC, and he finds Don interesting, Don shows Bubbles the job promotion all, telling her to wait for him there while he goes through the process. Bubbles removes his collar, and he enters the hall, where he sees the job promotion statue. The statue takes his materials, allowing him to undergo the job promotion, and he is happy he finally has a human form, but he suddenly receives a system message. Meanwhile, Bubbles thinks about how Don told her that he is her hidden quest, but a squirrel approaches her, telling her that hidden quests are difficult to unlock and suggests that she was tricked by her pet. She tells him that her pet is level 20, but the squirrel reveals she shouldn't be able to capture a level 20 monster, because her level is too low. So the squirrel concludes that her pet must have allowed himself to be captured, and she is just being fooled by him. He tells her a story about a pet who allowed himself to be captured, only to turn on the player. The squirrel advises her to get rid of her pet, as he walks away with a smile on his face. Don appears in his human form, expecting her to be attracted to his good looks, but he becomes confused. Bubbles starts crying. She tells him about the weird things that the squirrel told her, asking him if he was lying to her. He admits he lied, but he suddenly kneels before her, wanting to be her most loyal knight. Don holds onto her hand, swearing to protect her as he suddenly coughs up blood. He explains that he made a blood oath, which is the strongest bond they can create in the game and he did it to assure her that he has no bad intentions. They grab something to eat, and Bubbles is now happy, but Don wonders about the squirrel. He thinks about the strange message he received, which tells him he is being watched, and that he must finish the main quest if he wants more answers. Bubbles overhears a conversation about the Godhead entrance exam, asking Don about it, and he reveals that the Godhead Academy is one of the largest schools in the game and she would be considered as a legend if she can graduate from there. Don points her over to the registration table, telling her that the first place in the entrance exam will be given hints for the main quest. The main quest is the yearly quest given by game developers, and in the previous year, there was a war because of it, with the winner obtaining the highest grade artifact. Bubbles becomes interested. 
she gobbles up her food and rushes to the registration table as the squirrel continues to spy on them and we learn that he's the cat ninja's master. They line up at the registration table where Don sees some players from the mega guilds. He explains that mega guilds have more than 100 members and is usually composed of strong players. He reveals that the two strongest guilds are the Shanyuan and the Luminaries, which have members right in front of them. As she registers, she nervously mentions that she is still at level 10, which catches Jake's attention as he calls her a noob. Jake offers to help her out, but Don gets in his way, telling Jake that his master is high enough level to participate. Jake laughs, thinking Don is too weak to protect his master. Jake pulls out his sword and takes a swing at his head but Don dodges his attack. Jake becomes enraged, charging at Don with his ultimate skill, but Don summons ice from the ground and disarms Jake with his ice sword. He immobilizes Jake with his ice and throws blades at him which finish him off. Bubbles is impressed, and the man at the registration table asks for her pet's level, and Don reveals he is now at level 34. As they walk around the city, they witness a robbery. Don knows it's a low-level quest, so it's not worth doing, but Bubbles checks up on the girl, telling him to go after the thief. Don reluctantly obeys, running after the thief. He freezes the ground, causing the thief to stumble, and he retrieves the stolen goods, but the girl goes straight for the thief, beating him up for robbing her every day. The girl treats them to some food for helping her out, revealing that she is always ignored, and that they were the first players to help her. So she seems to have a special reward for them. Don thinks they have just completed a hidden quest, and wonders what kind of treasure they are about to receive, but it turns out to just be her business card, and she introduces herself as Yukio. Don is disappointed, but she gives Bubbles a book, telling her that it's a guide for the Godhood entrance exam. Don checks it out, and says the book is a good reward for the hidden quest, because it will help them ace the exam. Bubbles asks him why she didn't receive any reward for helping him with his job promotion, since he called himself a hidden quest but Don claims that his eternal protection is the reward. He tries to tell Bubbles the truth, but the system censors his words as he tells his story, making Bubbles think he is cursing her, so she hits him and walks away. He realizes he can't tell anyone his story, so his only option is to complete the main quest. They go to the skeleton warriors, who are now building a camp with the goblins. Bubbles is afraid of them, so she tries to run away, but Don tells her not to be afraid, because he is their boss. The monsters surround them, and they try to attack Don, unable to recognize him, so he turns back into a skeleton warrior, calling out to Bonnie and Fatty. Fatty is happy to see him, updating him about the situation. The skeletons have subjugated the goblins, making them build a tunnel, and Fatty reveals that they even have a throne for Don. He tells Fatty and Bonnie to help her train, saying that she needs to reach level 39 in a week. Don leaves the camp to train, practicing with his new skills. He gathers the materials needed for Bubbles' promotion, thinking about how he needs to ace the exam so that he can return to his world. After a few days, Fatty shows Bubbles some slimes, telling her that they can help her catch one. Bubbles picks one, finding it cute, and they help her by dealing damage to it. She is about to catch it, when suddenly, Jake kills it. Bubbles is upset, asking Jake why he killed her slime, and Jake remembers her, asking her about Don as he trembles in fear. Bubbles tells him that he isn't there, and Jake is relieved to hear this, but Fatty throws Bonnie at him, pushing him back, while Fatty kicks him in the balls. The skeletons beat him up, and they tie him up like a pig, planning to show him to Don. His followers show him Jake, but Don can't seem to recognize him given his current state, but Fatty reminds him about the knight that once killed them, so Don realizes who he is. Don thinks that Jake could be out for revenge, and he could threaten Fatty if they let him go, so he tells them to hold on to him. They go to the location of the entrance exam, where we learn that Bubbles is already at level 39. As Don reads the guide, he is approached by Yukio, and they decide to team up with her. They gather before the Academy's Dean, who is revealed to be one of the strongest people in Azure Sky, but he suddenly trips and falls over. His assistant quickly helps him into a chair, and the man announces that the exam will begin. He opens up some portals, which the candidates start to enter. The announcer, Green Afro, reveals that the first round will take place on an island, where the examinees must obtain three Phantom Martin pelts, complete three contraptions, and solve three magic puzzles. 
Completing two of the tasks will allow candidates to advance to the next round, but only the first 50 will be accepted. As the two candidates from the top guilds arrive, immediately forming a rivalry, everyone heads off to complete the tasks, and Yukio suggests hunting some Phantom Martins first. But Don knows it won't be easy, because everyone is already headed to the forest, so he thinks it's better to split up. Meanwhile, the cat ninja, Mushroom, receives orders to monitor Don. Don uses the manual to find the closest spawning point in the forest, and he sees a Phantom Martin, but it's too fast. But Don uses his magic to kill it, grabbing Green Afro's attention, and he is surprised to learn that Don is just a pet, but he's already at level 61. He uses the guide to find the monster's spawn points, allowing him to easily complete the quest. Meanwhile, we see Mushroom watching him, and he reports to his master Yiwu, who is also easily taking out the monsters. Mushroom wonders if he should try to stop Don, but Yiwu finds him interesting. Don suddenly surprises Mushroom, but just wants to sell him some pelts. He doesn't want to buy any, but Don pesters him, offering a discount. Mushroom tries to run away, but Don catches up to him, trying to convince him to buy the pelts. He does his best to escape, but Don persistently chases after him. Mushroom becomes exhausted, Don puts makeup on him and plays around with him before giving him some pelts and tells him to be more careful when spying on someone. Mushroom reports to Yiwu, telling him about what happened, and Yiwu orders him to tell everyone that Don is selling pelts. Meanwhile, Yukio and Bubbles struggle with the contraptions, since they appear to be missing a certain component. But at that moment, Bubbles receives loads of payment notifications, thinking that it could be because of Don, so she contacts him, asking him to explain what's happening. Don tells her that the other players paid him to help obtain some pelts, but he actually hoarded them all, offering them to the players at an outrageous price. Green Afro condemns his action, calling him a swindler, but he admits it doesn't go against the rules of the exam. As he pesters other players to buy his goods, the other skeletons are watching him, wanting to learn how to earn money, and thinking that their boss is so smart. Don assesses the situation, thinking that they are still in the lead even though he gave some pelts to the other players. So he carries on with his business, seeing some more players who are also looking for the monsters. Don offers them his pelts, but he soon realizes there is another guy who is doing the same thing. We learn his name is Bear Trap, as Don accuses him of stealing his idea, challenging him to a fight. They both try to convince the players to buy their pelts, but neither of them are successful as the players walk away. Green Afro thinks that they are about to fight, but they suddenly decide to work with each other, realizing they have a monopoly over the pelt market. Meanwhile, the top candidate from the Shenyuan Guild named Ling has already obtained the Martin pelts, and he is making his way to solve the magic puzzles. His companion, Jan, is an enchantress, which is a particularly challenging job, so there are not many players that choose that path. At that moment, he encounters Sane from the Luminaries, who challenges them to a fight. Ling accepts his challenge, charging with his sword. Sane is pushed back, and Ling declares he is the winner, because he is no longer in the circle. Jan solves the puzzle, and they move on to the next round. Elsewhere, the four lords of Shen Yuan are monitoring Sane, thinking Ling did well dealing with him. One of the lords named Dozan laughs, contacting a woman from the luminaries, and telling her that their top candidate is so weak. The woman claims Ling had help from someone outside their guild, but another lord named Sheng tells her she is free to do the same. But the woman tells them not to get ahead of themselves, since they are still in the first round, and ends the call. Meanwhile, Yi Wu learns that Ling has passed, thinking he should deal with him in the second round. Don goes to his partner, informing him that someone has already passed the first round, but they don't care, because they're too focused on the profits. A rich girl named Cece learns that they have total monopoly over the pelts, so she goes to them, paying the other people in the line to let her pass. We learn that Cece spent 500 million gold to buy a guild, and that everybody in her guild is paid at least 10,000 gold per month. She goes to Don, wanting to buy all of his pelts. Don knows she had 7 people in her group, so he offers to sell her 21 pelts, but at double the price. Cece says he would make a great merchant, agreeing to the price, and the two are overjoyed at the money they're making. As she walks away, Cece admits that she likes Don, wanting to acquire him if he makes it to the second round. They start running low on pelts, but Don thinks about how there should be enough pelts so that every player can get three, 
so he wonders why they don't have enough for everyone, thinking that someone else must also be farming the pelts. Meanwhile, we see Yiwu as he relaxes, and we learn that he has hoarded one component from the contraption challenge. Green Afro wonders if he plans on selling them to make money like Don, but he suddenly destroys them all, and reveals he was also hoarding the pelts, destroying them as well, wanting to lower the passing rate for the first round. We cut back to Don, and we see the players discussing how they are getting scammed. Yiwu approaches them, telling them that they've been outwitted by a pet, and he suggests taking the pelts by force. But the players say that they tried. But they are no match for Don since he is already at level 60. But Yiwu thinks that if they team up with the others, they might stand a chance. The players become determined to take him out, and they get other people to join them. Beartrap says they no longer have customers, and they see a group of players charging at them, so Don starts running away while Beartrap jumps on his back. He quickly reaches Bubbles' location, running right past them, and Bubbles joins in, asking Yiwa why they're chasing after him. Yiwa tells her how he was extorting people, and says his master did a bad job raising him, so they are also going to go after his master, which causes her to worry, running away and wondering what she should do. Don struggles to run away since Bear Trap is slowing him down, so he throws his partner to the ground, as the other players surround them. They attack Don, but he manages to dodge their attacks. Three players jump at him, but Don uses a technique he was saving, which freezes the whole area, and blows them all away. Yiwu approaches, and laughs at the sight, thinking it's been a while since someone surprised him. He contacts Mushroom, ordering him to track down Don, who runs back to his master with Bear Trap. Yukio reprimands them for causing a mess while she was busy trying to complete the contraptions. They apologize to her, and she orders them to look for the missing component, but Don knows that it could be impossible, wondering if there's an alternative. Yukio sees a strange component, which Bubbles explains she damaged but tried to fix. But this actually gives Yukio an idea. She thinks about reassembling the components to complete the contraptions, while Yukio starts working, Don plans to distract the other players. Mushroom sends Don's location to Yiwu, as he reveals that Don's teammates are building the contraption, and Yiwu orders him to bring people over to them. Meanwhile, Don is hiding from the other players, wondering why they can keep up with him despite his superior speed. Meanwhile, Don's teammates are busy assembling the contraption, but Mushroom arrives with a group of players, telling them that Bubbles is Don's master. Don uses his ultimate skill on the players, but this ends up draining his mana. He defends himself against them, and the players realize that he has run out of mana because he is no longer using his freeze spell. They use this opportunity to attack him with their skills, and it looks like Don is about to be defeated, but Yiwa suddenly arrives to save him. Yiwa asks him to become his pet in return for saving him, but Don tells him he is already taken. Yiwa calls his master a noob as he uses his skill to restrain the other players, but Don tells him that it's none of his business. Yiwa says he's running out of patience, and he teleports away, leading Don to the other players, as he thinks about destroying him since he can't have him as a pet. Meanwhile, the group of players demands for Bubbles to hand over Don, so Bubbles decides to summon her pet, but it turns out to be her pink slime called Blobby. The players feel humiliated, looking down on the slime, but Bubbles claims her slime is stronger than they think, as it suddenly transforms, gaining a massive body, and it's revealed to be level 55. Everyone is shocked seeing this, and Bubbles finds its new form adorable. Bubbles sends her slime to attack, but we cut back to Don, who is getting jumped by the other players. Yiwu thinks it's all over for him, as he laughs like a villain, but Don has a final technique, and he just calls Bubbles, and tells her to recall him back to the pet dimension, allowing him to dodge the attacks, and he taunts Yiwu as he disappears. The players turn their attention to Yiwu, because he attacked them earlier to save Don, so they end up beating him up. Meanwhile, Bubbles just enjoys the show as she just watches Blobby take out the players, and Don returns to join the group. Bubbles announces his arrival to the other players, and they all get scared, and pretend they are suddenly busy. The group goes on to collect parts, and Yukio ends up making the contraptions. At that moment, a girl suddenly appears, and Don prepares for a fight, but Bear Trap quickly stops them, saying that it's just his wife Sue, who came to find him after solving the magic puzzle, while the group is shocked he has a hot wife. 
Sue gets mad at him for disappearing on her, and she beats him up, while the others watch on. Sue rides on Bear Trap's shoulder, and she detects there is a tracking spell on Don. She helps him remove it, and Don wonders who could have put it on him, thinking back to when he was messing with Mushroom, and realizing that he was the culprit. Mushroom approaches with more players, but the group hands in their items, and advance to the next round. Green Afro notes that they are the second group to make it to the next round, and they are transported to an island, where Sprite tells them they can relax while they wait for the first round to finish. The group splits up, and Dawn takes the chance to relax, wondering what they will need to do in the next round. Bubbles joins him, and they admire the view together, but they get approached by a man who tells them Cece wants to talk to them. Cece immediately asks Bubbles if Dawn is for sale, offering her 500 million gold. But Bubbles drags him away, saying she still won't sell him. But this only makes Cece want him more. They are joined by the rest of their group, and Bubbles tells them the situation, but Bear Trap is also interested in the money, wondering if Cece would want to buy him as well, but his wife gets mad thinking he wants to work for another woman. At night, Green Afro congratulates everyone who passed the first round, and reveals the rankings of the players. Green Afro introduces the next event, and it turns out the second round is going to be a game of werewolf. He explains that during the game, there are day and night phases. In the day, players are given identity cards, and at night they are allowed to attack each other. There are three different identities, the werewolf, detective, and villager. Werewolves have increased attack at night, while detectives have the ability to check another player's identity, and they must try to protect the villagers. When a player is defeated, their points are given to the winner, but if a player accidentally attacks someone on their own team, they will be penalized and lose half their stats. The starting points are based on the results of the first round, and each of the players is given their card. We see Bubbles got the detective card, and Don tells her to investigate Mushroom, because he has a grudge against him for putting a tracker on him in the last round. We see Mushroom has the werewolf card, and he looks around for a victim, but Don and Bubbles approach him with an ominous aura. Mushroom can't attack, in case they are on the same team, and Bubbles starts petting him. Don tells him he found out about the tracking spell, but Mushroom plays dumb. With no other choice, Mushroom activates the ability of his card, which doubles his attack stat. He attacks with his knife, but Don easily blocks it, saying that even with his attack doubled, he is still no match for him, and he ends up getting frozen by Don. They make him wear a dress, and they take pictures of him, but he can't handle the humiliation, and he tells them to just kill him. So Don sends Blobby to finish him off, and she crushes him to death. Bubbles gets his points, and they leave to find other werewolves. Mushroom turns into a ghost, and Green Afro finds it strange he is staying in the game, even though he can't interact with the other players. But we see that he uses the assassin's sign language to give information to Hiwu. Green Afro wonders if this is cheating, asking the Dean if it's allowed, but he is just sleeping, so his assistant compliments them on finding such a loophole. Meanwhile, we see Ling and Jan talking about what they should do. Yiwu visits them, and Jan scans his identity, and they see he is just a villager. Yiwu claims that their guilds worked together in the previous main quest, so he suggests forming an alliance. He gives them a list of the identities that Mushroom helped him find out, but Ling doesn't want his help, thinking he is strong enough to win without his help. So Yiwu leaves him the list, and tells him to think about his offer. Ling ends up taking out a bunch of people on the list. Jan thinks Yiwu's plan is to make him have the highest score, so that the rest of the players will gang up on him, but Ling isn't worried. At that moment, Don and Bubbles run by, and Don immediately feels his killing intent. They prepare for a fight, and Ling charges with his sword, but Don creates an ice barrier, and they quickly run away. The next day, Don and Bubbles relax on the beach, and they are joined by their friends. The group gets approached by two people, and the man Tarzan smells Don and suddenly jumps onto him calling him his mother. Don wonders what's going on, and the man's companion Eve tells them that Tarzan was raised by monsters, and Don must smell like his mother. Don refuses to be his mother, and Eve says she has important things to discuss. Tarzan rests on Don's lap, and Eve reveals she saw Mushroom sneak into Yiwa's room at night, so she thinks they must be working together. They think about what Yiwu could be after, but Don wonders why they are telling them all of this. Eve says that as individual players, they stand no chance against the Mega Guilds, so she proposes forming an alliance. 
Bear Trap thinks it's a good idea, and in the end, Don agrees to the alliance. After the meeting, Green Afro appears, updating the scores, and Ling is leading by a huge amount at 60 points. Ling approaches Don, calling him worthy to talk with him, but Yukio doesn't like his cocky attitude. Don agrees to chat with him, and Ling can tell he wants to solve the main quest, so joining his guild would give him the best chance. Ling also reveals his sword, saying it's impossible for him to lose. Bubbles wonders what's so special about it, and Don reveals it's an artifact weapon from the previous main quest, and it has the ability to quadruple a person's attributes. Ling tells him he has no chance of solving the main quest by himself, telling him to join, but Don is more interested in feeding Bubbles some fruit. At night, the group meets up, and they prepare their next move. Don tells them all about Ling's artifact sword, and Eve thinks it will be hard to deal with him, even if they all ganged up on him. They meet with Cece the next day, who thinks Bubbles is finally ready to sell Don to her. Bubbles says she can't sell him since she sees him as a friend, so Cece decides to offer twice as much money. Don thinks she should be able to buy pets that are even stronger than him, but Cece says she likes him because he is smart. Bubbles says they are there to form an alliance, but Cece wonders why she should join. Don tells her he can introduce her to other smart pets, and Cece is instantly convinced, ordering her men to help them out. Don approaches Yuwa next. He pretends to thank him for his help when he was being hunted by the other players, but they both know the truth. However, they pretend to be friends so they can work together, and Don suggests ganging up on Ling to take him out. Don goes to see Sane next. He plays off Sane's natural rivalry with Ling, and he manages to get him to join the alliance, revealing that Ling is going to be a werewolf that night, so they can all attack him together. At night, Don and Bubbles approach Ling, who calls them bold for approaching him, but Bubbles says they are not alone, summoning her allies. Ling is unfazed, charging straight into them, and he gets behind Don, but Don starts attacking with his ice. They all start attacking him from all sides, and cover for each other, but Ling seems to have the upper hand. Don is impressed by his sword, but knows that there are five seals on the sword, which are unlocked at each ascension level, so Ling should only have one seal unlocked, but Ling says it's more than enough. Cece sends her men to attack, and we see they are trying to stall for time. Don attacks in his skeleton form, freezing Ling's sword, but Ling easily dispels it. He decides to end things, and he cuts Don in half, but Don is okay, revealing that in his skeleton form he can freely manipulate his body. Ling suddenly notices a ritual in the distance, and he rushes over. We see Sane is using an artifact called the Pandora's Box, that can sacrifice other players, so he can gain all of their stat points. There are more than 20 people being sacrificed, but he still needs one minute to complete the ritual. Ling charges at him, but he is stopped by Yiwu, who tells him he should have formed an alliance with him when he had the chance. Yiwu attacks him, along with Bear Trap. The other group rushes over, but Ling throws his sword at Sane. But Bubbles manages to summon Blobby just in time, and it's just enough to stop the sword. Sane's ritual completes, and he gains overwhelming power. Sane is excited to get his revenge, charging at Ling, but Ling claims he is just a priest, so even with the stat boost, he still can't win. But Ling suddenly gets stabbed from behind, and he gets low on health. But he activates his trump card, unsealing the power of his sword, and activating his shadow lotus form. Green Afro notes that together with the werewolf ability, Ling now has 8 times the attack. Ling starts dominating the fight, easily blowing everyone away. He creates a lotus in the sky, which causes damage to everyone around with its petals. But the attack is stopped by Sane, revealing another artifact known as the Ever Soul, which has the ability to store a technique for him to use. Sane copies Ling's Shadow Lotus form, and Ling thinks he won't be able to use it as well as him. They exchange blows, and Don helps Sane out, but Ling quickly returns, and stabs Don in the chest. It looks like he is going to die, but Don starts healing, as Bubbles shares her HP with him. Don grabs onto Ling, and Sane delivers a finishing blow, and Ling is defeated. Meanwhile, the Luminary's representative gloats about winning to the four Shenyuan elders. They tell her not to get cocky, because they will get even during the main quest. The players all celebrate their win, and Green Afro appears, with an update to the scores. Yiwu turns out to be in first place, and it seems that after Sane took out Ling, Yiwu ambushed him and took all his points. 
Bear Trap wonders how it's possible, and Don explains that Sane's Pandora's box leaves the user weakened for 48 hours. Yukio thinks Yiwa will be in hiding since he's ahead. But Don points out that if they added all their points together, they would have the same amount of points as him, so he is sure Yiwa will try to attack them. Bear Trap checks Yiwa's identity, and they learn he will be a werewolf that night. At night, Don and Bubbles confront Yiwu. Don pretends they are still allies, but Yiwu instantly starts attacking them. He aims for Bubbles, but Don protects her. Yiwu gets pushed back, and Don tells him Bubbles is also a werewolf, so he will be punished if he kills her. But Yiwu doesn't believe him, because if she was really a werewolf, Don wouldn't need to protect her. He activates one of his skills, and when Don tries to stop it, he is trapped in a cage. Bubbles tries to run, but Yiwu catches up to her, so she summons Blobby to protect herself. Blobby attacks, but it ends up being controlled by Yiwu, who tells her that manipulation is a basic skill for assassins. Blobby starts attacking her, and Don tries to get out of the cage using his ice. The cage ends up shattering, and Don freezes Blobby. Bubbles quickly recalls Blobby, while Don fights with Yiwu. Yiwu's blade turns into a chain, and Don ends up getting stabbed. Yiwu thinks it's over for him, but Don suddenly transforms, shooting his arm that goes right through Yiwu. Don reveals that as a skeleton, his body is hollow, so being stabbed barely affects him. Yiwu's body transforms into a substitution, and they hear his voice laughing at them. Yiwu attacks with his chain blade, but Bear Trap and their other allies appear to help them. Yiwu reappears, saying they don't stand a chance. He claws himself, and he charges at the group. They struggle against him, and he ends up surrounding them, activating his artifact that traps them in a prison. Don tries to break out with his ice, but he is instantly blown back. Yiwu immediately goes after Bubbles, but Yukio arrives just in time to save her. Yiwu recalls his clones, charging at Bubbles from behind, but he is suddenly stopped by Sue, and she takes the chance to teleport Bubbles and Yukio away, but Yiwu breaks free from her spell and seals her in a cage. Yiwu catches up to the two girls, preparing to finish Bubbles off, but Yukio stops his blade, and he ends up stabbing her in the back. Bubbles refuses to give up, summoning Blobby to fight, but Yiwu finds it boring, as he easily deals with it. Meanwhile, Don tries to break free, but the prison only gets tighter. They are about to be crushed, but Tarzan goes berserk, wanting to protect his mother Don, and he unleashes a devastating flurry of attacks, managing to destroy the barrier. Don sees Yiwu approaching Bubbles, and Yiwu attacks with his blade, but Bubbles blocks it using the shield ability that villagers are given. Yiwu becomes confident she's a villager after seeing her use that skill, so he gets serious and prepares to finish her off. Don tells her to summon him, and he appears just in time to summon an ice dragon and stop Yiwu's attack. Yiwu's mask gets blown off in the exchange, and Don is shocked to see that he looks just like him. Yiwu takes this chance, and he stabs Bubbles from behind. Don rushes to her, and Yiwu laughs, thinking he has finally won, but Bubbles suddenly gets back up, and Yiwu loses half of his stats, and all of his points, because Bubbles is actually also a werewolf. Yiwu wonders how that is possible, and Don finishes him off. Don claims he told the truth at the beginning, and it's his own fault for not believing him. Yiwu asks how Bubbles was able to use the villager's special shield ability, and Bubbles reveals it was thanks to Yukio, who used her villager's skill on Bubbles to trick him. Yiwu starts to disappear after losing, and Don asks how he looks the same as him. It seems Yiwu has knowledge about Don's life in the real world, but before he can say anything else, Yiwu ends up disappearing. At that moment, Jan suddenly approaches. Don tells Bubbles to run, but Jan catches her, and she binds them all in an instant. But the game ends up ending, and the 10 top players pass the exam to get into the academy. The players start coming out. The top 5 candidates are revealed, and it turns out Bubbles is in first place. Don and Bubbles celebrate their win, and they are presented with the hint for the main quest. The award ceremony comes to an end, but Don suddenly has an idea. He says they were only able to win thanks to everyone's help, so he decides to share the hint with everyone. As he opens the scroll, it's a poem that talks about a passage that leads to another world, and will bring about a new era. When Don sees the scroll, he recognizes the marking, which is the same as the marking on his head. Meanwhile, the Xianyuan elders think that the passage will soon appear, and they are annoyed that Jan ended up letting Don and Bubbles win. We see the other players complaining about Don and Bear Trap scamming them, but Don and Bubbles have already escaped. They run away with Yukio, 
and they end up coming across Jan, who reveals Eve and Tarzan were working for her. We see a marking on Don's hand, and we learn that in the final moments of the game, Jan put a death curse on him, telling him to find her after the exam. Don wonders why she helped them, and Jan wants to speak with him in Yukio, saying Bubbles won't be able to understand since she is from another world. They go to a cafe, and Jan reveals she knows about the real world, and that certain characters within Azure Sky have gained sentience. Don wonders what she wants from him, and Jan says the main quest has something to do with the two worlds connecting, so she wants to find a way to go to the real world. She reveals she worked with the Shanyuan Guild because they are also awakened, but she says she let him win in the exam as a sign of good faith. Yukio wonders what she can do since she is only level 30, but Jan takes out a divine artifact, and Don recognizes it as a gem that can alter one's stats. Jan activates the gem, and shows her true stats, revealing she is actually a level 100 priestess of the Shanling Mountain. She claims that even if he refuses, they will find a way to reach the real world, but she says she would prefer to have his help, as she flies off on a bird. As Don makes his way back to their camp, he encounters Jake, who calls him his boss, clinging to his leg, and telling him that the base was destroyed. Jake leads them to their new base, which seems to be an entire city now. Jake explains that they were robbed by players while Don was away, so they had to move to a new base. Don wonders what he's doing there, so Jake reveals that after their last encounter, Fatty allowed him to leave, but he realized how powerful the skeletons are, so he decided to join them, calling Fatty his boss. At that moment, Bonnie and Fatty arrive with a strange creature named May. Bubbles finds him cute, but he suddenly dashes to Don, clinging to his head, as he starts calling Don the boss. Fatty reveals that May is one of them, and Don orders Fatty to give his report, so he tells Don that they were able to improve themselves as planned. However, they are all stuck at level 60, because they can't enter the main city to change jobs. One day, while they were fortifying their camp, they notice May spying on them, so Jake tries to catch him, but he quickly dashes away. Fatty comes up with an idea, luring it in with food, and May ends up asking to stay with them. Since then, May has been treated as part of their family, and Fatty tells him about Don. As they discuss this in the conference room, Don asks Fatty who robbed their base camp. We learn that a squirrel player was behind the attack, and they seem to be trying to capture the skeletons. The skeletons try to run away, but the woman uses magic to block their path, telling them to go with her. The squirrel attacks them, but he is suddenly electrocuted, and May starts beating him up. The woman recognizes May as a rare mutant baby with dark attributes, and the squirrel thinks about capturing him for profit. The woman uses her ultimate skill, throwing an orb to capture May, as she claims that no one can escape from it, but May breaks out of it, surprising the woman. She prepares to attack again, but the squirrel thinks it's over, because the skeletons have escaped through the tunnel. He tells them that they need to get stronger so that they won't get bullied, but Bonnie reminds him that they can't change jobs, Don tells them not to worry, as Cece and Yukio arrive. Don asks them about the task he gave them, so Yukio pulls out the design for the job change hall. Don reveals that he plans to move the job change hall to their base, and they start setting it up. The job change statue arrives, and they bring it to their hall, where the skeletons undergo the job changing process. We see the two players walking to their base. They arrive at the entrance, and a guard gives the signal, opening the gate. The squirrel wonders what's going on, as they see May and Don playing cards. He thinks that the skeletons are trying to scare them off, but three skeletons suddenly appear behind them, exchanging blows with them, and encircling them. The players realize that they're at a disadvantage, so they jump away, trying to retreat, but Bonnie and Fatty appear, restraining the woman. At the conference room, Don informs Fatty that he will be leaving for the academy with May, thinking he has more potential than all of them, they enter the academy, where the guide named Mint welcomes them and shows them around. She informs them that the academy is one of the best in their world, as she leads them to the testing ground, saying she will test their brainwave synchronization and reaction speed. Ling is going to take the test first, and Bubbles wonders why he's there, because he was eliminated during the exam. Ling touches the stone tablet, and his brainwave synchronization rate, which represents his body's adaptation to the world, is revealed to be 92%. He dodges the balls thrown at him, and he earns a reaction level of S+. When Don takes the test, there is a pillar of light, as everyone wonders what's going on. 
His synchronization rate is revealed to be 100%, so he starts laughing, thinking he's the chosen one, but Mint slaps him, saying all pets have a 100% synchronization rate. He is ordered to go back, and it's Bubbles' turn to take the test. She gets a synchronization rate of 95%, but she fails the reaction test. They are taken to Bubbles' dorm, where Mint reveals that the dorm can change according to her imagination, so Bubbles has everything she needs. There's a separate dorm for pets, but it's super crowded. A fox named Crescent Moon asks for his owner's dorm, so Don gives it to him, but he just walks away, telling Don to find a space to sleep. Don tries to leave, but a barrier repels him, as Crescent Moon tells him they can't escape unless the owner picks them up. However, May hops out of a small opening, breaking the seal from outside, and Don rushes to leave, as the other pets scramble to escape. The following day, Bubbles wakes up, and she makes her way to Don, but as she opens her door, she encounters Mint, telling her that Don is in big trouble. She goes to the Vice Dean's office, where we see Don and May trapped in a barrier. The Vice Dean reprimands them for causing trouble during their first day. They implore him not to expel them, saying they are willing to accept punishment. At that moment, Cece enters the office. She offers to pay for the damages, but the Vice Dean refuses, telling her to follow the school rules. But he decides to give Don a second chance, so he breaks the barrier, ordering Don to recover the pets that are running rampant. Bear Trap and Sue arrive at the academy, which is now filled with animals. They see Don facing a kangaroo, as the kangaroo launches a flying kick, but it ends up getting caught. The vice principal is impressed, because Don was able to resolve the problem in less than a week. After that, they reunite with Bear Trap, and Bubbles wonders what their mentor will be like. Their mentor joins them, and we learn that she is a five-time job changer named Quinn. Quinn informs him that there are still two pets at large, saying he should have taken care of them before he went to her. She shows them the pets, saying one is called Nether Ghost, and the other one is Crescent Moon. Quinn knows that they are difficult to deal with, but she wants Don to catch them. After some time, Bubbles learns that Nether Ghost is also a five-time job changer. Bear Trap remembers that Nether Ghost was involved with the eighth main story quest, where he and his owner caused some trouble. The group meets up with Ling, and they inquire about Nether Ghost's owner. Don knows that his owner hasn't been online since the last main quest, asking Ling if it's because he harassed Ling's guildmate Tai, but Ling denies this, saying he knows what happened. Nether Ghost joins the conversation, revealing that he has kept a video of the events in his horn. He shows it to everyone, and we learn that Nether Ghost inhabits a certain island, where he frightens the players who are working on their quests. We meet a boy named Shen, who turns out to be his next target. Nether Ghost scares him, causing him to fall to his knees and start crying, but Nether Ghost finds him weird, because unlike other players, he didn't try to run away. Shen takes a liking to him, and Nether Ghost inquires about Shen's background. He reveals he is a sick teenager. They become good friends, but after some time, Shen reveals that he'll be leaving soon, because the doctor told him that he doesn't have much time left. Nether Ghost orders Shen to capture him as a pet, and they set off on a journey together, as they experience all the pleasures that the world has to offer. Shen tells him that death in his world is permanent, and that he still isn't ready for it, because he's too young to die. Nether Ghost is determined to make everyone know about Shen, planning to secure the number one spot in the main quest for him. We see Nether Ghost going against the other players during the main quest, holding onto the key, as the players try to take it from him, but he bumps into Tai. He knows that she's a threat, but he still tries to fight her, and he ends up being restrained. At that moment, the Dean arrives, telling her to let him go, so she walks away, and the Vice Dean sets him free, telling him to go back to Shen. Nether Ghost finds Shen in a weakened state, as Shen tells him that he is happy to spend his final moments in the game with him, but Shen's body starts to disappear. Shen tells Nether Ghost that he still wants to spend more time with him, as the Dean appears, revealing that Shen's consciousness has been preserved, so there is still a chance to bring him back to life. He tells Don that he doesn't want to return to the pet dorm, asking Don if he can work for him instead. We see Crescent Moon in a classroom, taking notes as the teacher gives a lecture about success. The teacher tells them that they need to learn from the people on top, as she shows them a picture of Dozon, calling him the strongest man alive. The group gathers outside the classroom, as Nether Ghost tells them that Crescent Moon is dangerous, but Don says he just wants to chat. 
Don offers to help him out if he returns to the dorm, but Crescent Moon suddenly exudes his aura, as he tells Don that humans can't be trusted. Don wonders how he knows about humans, as he covers the room with dark energy. We see Don fighting Crescent Moon, who calls humans weak, as he proceeds to give Don a beating. Don unleashes his skill, and his friends join the fight. They combine their powers, and they clash with Crescent Moon, but Crescent Moon escapes. Bear Trap wants to pursue him, but Don stops him, saying they can't win against him. We see Crescent Moon staring at the sky, as he mentions the name Juju, but Mei suddenly appears, asking him about the name. Mei sits with him, and he asks Mei about the Outsiders. Mei tells him that the Outsiders are actually good people, but Crescent Moon calls him lucky, saying there are also bad people. In a flashback, we see Crescent Moon imprisoned in a cage, as an old squirrel tries to sell him. The buyer named Tiger wonders about the price, but the squirrel tells him an outrageous number. He reveals that he doesn't want to spend money to buy what he wants, and he tells the squirrel to get lost. And since then, his life has been filled with suffering, as Tiger constantly abused him, forcing him to become an assassin. One day, after he eliminates his target, he stumbles upon a girl named Juju, who is new to his master's guild. Juju wants to learn from him, but he tells her to leave, refusing to train her. However, she chases after him, and she falls over, telling him to wait for her, because she can't run anymore. He helps her up, and they end up becoming friends. He starts training her, and she tells him that she knows Tiger in the real world. Crescent Moon asks her about the real world, so she explains it to him, and he learns about the other side. He enjoys spending time with her, but she eventually disappears, making him fall into despair. Back in the present, Mei shares this story to Don and his friends, and they all wonder what happened to Juju. Cece joins them, telling them that she has done her research, and she reveals that Juju has probably passed away. At that moment, Crescent Moon appears, asking Cece if she is sure about this. We see her holding onto Juju's death certificate, telling him that Tiger got drunk one night. Crescent Moon starts crying, wondering why Tiger is still alive, but Cece assures him that Tiger has already been arrested, so he's going to be brought to justice. Hearing this, Crescent Moon decides to return to the dorm, and Don's group reports to the Vice Dean, telling him that they have accomplished the mission. The Vice Principal tells them that he has a new assignment for them, revealing that there are a few hidden quests in the script town. He wants them to go there as the new student representatives. He gives Don and Bubbles some Class A equipment, as well as a scroll which contains hints for the hidden quest. We see Don's party arriving at Script Town, and they check out an old hotel. They meet the owner, and she gives them a scroll, telling them to follow the rules, and turn the place into the most popular hotel in the area. Don thinks the quest is going to be easy, giving the scroll to Cece, but upon reading the rules, she realizes she can't use her money. Don accepts the quest, so the owner shows them around, but it turns out to be haunted. He is suddenly transported to a room, where a girl tries to entice him, but he returns to his skeleton form, causing her to become scared. He tells her that they're both skeletons, so there's nothing to be afraid of. Cece and Jing enter a room, where they encounter a zombie, but Jing tells her not to worry, as he charges at the zombie, beating him into submission. After some time, the group gathers together, as Don tells the ghosts that scaring people is bad for business. As they clean the place up, they get the ghosts to help them, as punishment for trying to scare them. Don finds a picture while cleaning, thinking the girl in the picture is the owner. So he approaches her, showing her the picture he found while cleaning. But the zombie looks at the picture, and he recognizes the man as his owner. Don inquires about the man, but the zombie can't remember anything. At that moment, a notification appears, asking them if they want to help the zombie regain his lost memories. Don thinks that they have triggered a hidden quest, and he tells Bubbles to accept it. Three days later, Yukio enters the hotel, asking them why they look so drained, and Don gives Yukio the picture they found. She thinks that the man is from the east, since he has a dark complexion, explaining there are four continents in the world. She says that Ling knows more about the East, so she contacts him and gives him the information they've gathered so far, telling him to look into it. So he sends her a message, which contains an emblem from the Soul Refining Sect. Ling is able to identify the man as Qi, who was a genius candidate for sect leader, but his whereabouts are currently unknown. They decide to head East, while Cece stays in the hotel to finish the quest. 
They meet up with Ling, and they board a ship. But along their way, there is suddenly a girl named Yoon on their ship, who is from the Soul Refining Sect. The ship hits a barrier, as she reveals they have entered her territory. Ling greets her, asking for her assistance in their investigation, but she refuses to help, and she starts attacking them. Don uses his Class A equipment to deal with the attackers, while Yukio pulls out a machine gun, and she starts firing at Yoon's men, forcing them to retreat. Yoon throws knives at Ling, and he ends up getting hit, as he realizes that Yoon is too strong for them, thinking she can defeat them on her own. So he decides to use a powerful skill, which ends up destroying the ship. Don wakes up in a cave, and he tries to call Bubbles, but the pet, Ming Shi, informs him that there is a spell that prevents them from contacting the outside world. Ming Shi explains that they are in the Soul Refining Cave, where spirit animals are imprisoned. Yun reports to the sect master Jia, saying they are still trying to track down Yukio and Ling. Jia is disappointed in her, asking her how she messed up, and she recalls how Bubbles claimed her after the ship was destroyed. Bubbles appears before Jia, and she says that she will go offline if they don't release her. Jia thinks that Bubbles is the girl from the prophecy, so she orders Yun to remove the restraints and allow Bubbles to join the celebration. Back in the cave, Ming Shi reveals that his owner is from Qi's tribe. We learn that there are two tribes in the Soul Refining Sect, and the tribe led by Jia wants to refine pets for their own use, while Qi's tribe wants peaceful coexistence with the pets. Because of their differences, there was a civil war between the two tribes, and Qi ended up losing. Don thinks that Qi's disappearance is connected to the civil war, and he meets the Black Tortoise, which is one of the four spirit animals of the East. Bubbles summons Nether Ghost and orders him to search for Don. We return to Don, who wonders why the Black Tortoise is locked up, because he's supposed to be one of the state's royal protectors. The Tortoise wakes up, and he looks down on Don, thinking he's too weak to be in the cave. But the tail starts talking to him, telling him to forgive his little brother, because he's not in a good mood. The tail reveals that Jia is about to refine and absorb them using her technique. Don wonders how he can free them from the restraints, and the tail reveals that only someone like Nether Ghost can do it. We see Nether Ghost lost in the woods, where he sees Ling and Yukio being pursued by Yun's group. Yun prepares to attack, but Nether Ghost stops her and informs Yukio that Bubbles is in the cafeteria, telling her to go there while he holds them off. Ling and Yukio are able to escape, and Yun tries to attack Nether Ghost, but none of her attacks are working, as she realizes that he's using space powers, so she calls for help. A man named Guan makes his entrance, using a net to capture Nether Ghost, and sending him to the cave. Back in the cave, Don reveals that he knows a Nether Ghost, but he can't reach him at the moment. The tortoise gives Don a piece of his shell, as the tail explains that it will help Don gain the trust of the other spirit animals. They find a bird hiding, and Ming Shi confirms it's the Vermilion bird, saying she probably used Nirvana to set herself free. He explains that Nirvana is the bird's ability of rebirth, but this makes her forget her past. She reveals that he has a familiar smell, which Don realizes is coming from the tortoise shell, and this causes her to trust him, recognizing him as her mother. They find the dragon next, and Don tells him the tortoise sent him. The dragon wonders how they can escape, but at that moment, Nether Ghost enters the cave, and Don tells him to break the dragon's restraints, so he destroys the dragon's chains. Don suggests looking for the white tiger, and the dragon reveals that the tiger was seriously injured, so he had to store the tiger's spirit within him, saying he will appear after they escape the cave. Don tells Nether Ghost to help them escape, but he reveals that there is a barrier trapping them inside. Don receives the tokens of the four spirit animals, as the dragon reveals that it will give him the power to escape with Nether Ghost. Meanwhile, Lin and Yukio find a tunnel, and they end up falling into a hidden room, where they find a recording device. Yukio turns it on, and it displays a hologram of Chi. He reveals that they are in the secret room where his grandmaster practiced with pets, telling them that he will share the story of his adventure with Mao Mao. In a flashback, we see Chi on a beach, as he dreams about leaving the island to go on adventure, and he sees a girl lying on the beach, knowing she is an outsider. He approaches her, as he realizes that the soldiers are on their way, so he summons his pet, Ajin, ordering him to carry the girl to safety. When she wakes up, he explains she somehow ended up in the Soul Refining Island, but she thanks them for saving her, introducing herself as Mao Mao, and saying she needs to leave the island. 
She tells her that the island is surrounded by a barrier, but it will disappear on the day of the trial. She tells him about the outside world, saying it's filled with all kinds of treasures and exotic animals. But Chi becomes sad, because he isn't allowed to leave the island, revealing that the trial is the only time he can leave. He tells Mao Mao about his plan to become the sect leader, revealing that he doesn't know what to do after he achieves his goal, so she invites him to open a hotel with her. Six months later, Jia announces that it's time for the trial, informing them that it will last for six months. Yun approaches Chi, inviting him to join her during the trial, but he declines, saying he's going to have a date with someone. Chi joins Mao Mao during his trial, and they enjoy their time together, as their relationship deepens. Meanwhile, Jia attacks the sect leader, who is surprised by her sudden betrayal. We return to Chi and Mao Mao, who have just finished setting up the hotel, but Mao Mao wonders why they still don't have customers. Chi thinks it's because Ajin is scaring them away, so she suggests turning it into a horror-themed hotel, thinking it will attract customers. But after some time, we see Yun restraining Chi as she informs him that the leader is dead and that Jia has risen to power. She tries to kill Mao Mao, but she blocks it with a barrier as Yun realizes that she is from the royal family and she is holding onto a treasure that gives her power. But Yun thinks that not even the royal family can stop them and she puts a curse on Mao Mao, telling her that she will age and forget everything that happened. Yun tells Chi to return with her, saying she will beg her master to let him stay, but he refuses her offer and he uses the soul shifting technique, which transfers his consciousness to his pet. Her companion is about to go after Ajin, but she stops him, ordering him to take Chi's body. Back in the present, Chi reveals that Jia plans to dominate Azure Sky by refining the four spirit animals, but a medium is required to refine them, so she plans on sacrificing bubbles. We see Yukio and Lei in the woods, where Yukio asks if he can summon his guild for help. He reminds her the communications are blocked, but says he has another plan. Before they split up, she thanks Ling for his help, and he tells her that he's doing this because they're friends. Yukio rushes to the celebration, but a barrier stops her, and Guan restrains her, asking her about Ling's whereabouts. But she refuses to answer his question, so he proceeds to torture her. Dawn suddenly arrives to save her, ordering Nether Ghost to take care of her, but Guan tries to trap them, so Dawn uses his powers to break free. Dawn gets hit by his attack, and Guan believes that he is already dead, so he makes his way to Yukio, preparing to finish her off, but Dawn stabs him from behind. Guan realizes that Dawn used the dragon's scale to heal his wounds, and Guan praises his tactic, admitting that he has lost. Dawn checks up on Yukio, who tells him that she needs time to recover, so he should rescue Bubbles without her, giving him the scroll from the secret room. The celebration begins, as Jia appears before everyone. Jia opens a portal, calling forth the four spirit animals, and she throws bubbles to them, preparing to sacrifice her to refine the beasts, but Don interrupts her. Nether Ghost disables her spell, and he sets bubbles free, but Jia stops him before he can reach the beasts. However, he uses his tail, causing the portal to collapse, and allowing the beasts to escape. They try to take her down, but she is able to defend herself, and Don is surprised that she can hold her own against the four spirit animals. The tortoise grabs onto her as the dragon attacks, but she breaks free, lifting the tiger and sending him crashing against the tortoise. She charges at the dragon, knocking him down and telling them that resistance is futile. She prepares to refine them, but Don stops her, so she charges at him, but she gets surrounded by mushrooms. He makes his way to the defeated beasts, telling them that he learned the secret technique of the soul refining sect and asking them to lend him their powers. They decide to trust him, and they combine their powers, transforming their bodies into a powerful set of armor. But Jia doubts that he can control the power of the beasts, and he realizes that he's being influenced by their consciousness, so he becomes distracted. She tells him that he'll never be able to use their powers unless he erases their consciousness, and she charges at him, but he pushes her away, and they proceed to exchange blows. She grapples with him, telling him that he has potential, but his body has already reached its limit. She overpowers him, and she launches an energy ball, blowing him away. He tries to retreat, but she chases after him, and manages to take him down. The bird suggests retreating, thinking Don doesn't stand a chance. Gia proceeds to strangle Don, telling him that he'll never understand her misery. 
Bubbles joins the fight, and Dawn is surprised to see her, asking her what she's doing. She tells him that he has done so much for her, so she wants to protect him. Gia charges at Bubbles, but she blocks the attack, revealing that she is wearing the gloves given to her by the Vice Principal, which has the ability to trap people in their memories. In a flashback, we learn that Gia is the least gifted in her tribe, so her peers treated her harshly, but she had a pet which kept her company. Her tribe was having a dispute with Chi's tribe, and things escalated when they created their method of refining. Her master orders her to refine her pet, so she runs away, going to Chi's tribe to seek refuge, but they refuse to take her in, because they don't trust her, and her pet ends up betraying her. Because of this, she realizes that she can't trust anyone, thinking she will be abandoned if she's weak, so she starts wandering alone, and she stumbles upon the valley of poisonous beasts. She becomes surrounded, but her powers awaken, allowing her to refine the beasts, and she begins her mad quest for power. Back in the present, Gia realizes that Bubbles pried into her memories, so she becomes upset, unleashing her powers. Dawn prepares to take her on, as Yun and her men tell Gia that they want to help, but she decides to absorb their life force. Yun wonders why she's doing this, so she explains that it doesn't matter, because everything is just a stepping stone to her. She becomes stronger than ever before, and Dawn realizes that she is about to use the power of the devil animals against him, realizing that she absorbed them in the valley of poisonous beasts, so he becomes worried that he won't be able to defeat her. But Bubbles tells him to fight on, saying she will stay by his side. Chia fires an energy beam, and they struggle to defend against it, but the pets decide to help them. He combines his power with Bubbles, and they launch a powerful burst of energy, but Gia fights back, and she manages to overpower them. She is about to sacrifice the souls of her disciples to land the finishing blow, but she suddenly hears their voices, causing her to become distracted, giving Dawn an opening to attack her. She crashes to the ground, and the souls of her disciples return to their bodies, but Gia tells them they'll never escape, revealing that the barrier is powered by her life force. Dawn refuses to end her life, because it goes against his moral code. He proceeds to pummel the barrier, and he manages to destroy it, but he becomes exhausted. Gia laughs at the situation, realizing there is no reason left for her to live, so she covers the island with a demonic aura, preparing to blow herself up, but a staff suddenly hits her, knocking her down. Dozan makes his entrance, telling her that it's all over. Gia wonders why he's against her, but he pushes her back, telling her not to resist arrest. As Gia is about to be taken away, Don thanks Dozan for his help, but he tells Don that he was the one who stopped Gia. Bubbles wonders if Gia hates her pet, because she saw something in her vision, revealing that Gia's pet never betrayed her. It turns out that the pet pleaded with Chi's tribe to show her mercy, but when it was finally able to explain everything, she was nowhere to be found. Bubbles tells her that she is still loved, causing her to cry, and the ship finally departs. Don wonders how Dozan received the news, so he reveals that Ling took his own life just to leave the island, and inform them about the situation. Meanwhile, Yukio wonders why Ling did it, knowing it caused him to level down, but he says he wanted to help her. The bird decides to join Don's party, and the others bid them farewell, and they return to the hotel, where Don tells everyone about what happened. He reveals that he knows the identity of the hotel owner, and he proceeds to tell them all the story. Yoon enters the hotel. She explains that she saved her in the past, so she wants to repay him. She opens a box, releasing Chi's body, and she reveals that she kept his body safe, knowing this day would come. She regrets putting a curse on Mao Mao, saying only the scale of the dragon can undo the spell, but Don tells her that they are in luck. Mao Mao and Ajin join them, as Don uses the dragon's scale, lifting the curse, and allowing her to regain her youthful appearance. Chi's consciousness returns to his body, and Mao Mao realizes that he was with her all this time. He tells her that he'll never leave her, as a notification appears, revealing that the quest has been completed. Mao Mao thanks Dawn, and she gives him her necklace, saying it has always kept her safe. He gives Bubbles the necklace, thinking it should protect her. She takes the necklace, and she holds it with the tokens from the spirit animals, thinking they are all related. The items glow brightly, and they suddenly disappear, as Bubbles is absorbed into a portal. Dawn reaches out to her, but he finds himself in a strange area, where he sees a gate marked by the symbol, and it seems to lead to the other side. But that's where this video ends.
Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.